The sigma level calculator is available at the bottom of the measure menu. Once open, you can set it into max view mode in order to work in it. This calculator is used to determine the defects per million opportunities or DPMO, as well as the sigma level of your processes. The sigma level calculator can take both discrete and continuous data. We will start with some discrete data. Within the discrete data calculator, you can have up to three products or processes, and you can enter either the number of defects, the number of units, and the number of defect opportunities per unit, or you can enter the defects per million opportunities value directly if you have it. We will show you examples of both. First, let's use the first three rows. Let's say we have 100 defects per product A among 10,000 units. And with one defect opportunity per unit, you can see that our calculated DPMO for product A is 10,000 with a short-term sigma level of 3.8 and a long-term sigma level of 2.3. Let's go ahead and add product B. Let's say we have 1,000 defects among 10,000 units. And this time, let's say we have two defect opportunities per unit. Now you can see that our calculated DPMO for product B is 50,000 with a short-term sigma level of 3.1 and long-term sigma level of 1.6. Note that over in the total column, we can actually see the total sigma level of both products combined together. So we have a total of 1,100 defects among 20,000 units and a weighted average of 1.5 defect opportunities per unit to give a calculated DPMO of 36,667, a short-term sigma level of 3.3, and a long-term sigma level of 1.8. We can go ahead and add yet another product, C, with some number of defects and some total units and one defect opportunity per unit. And you can see that those results are also calculated and used in the total column. Now, the total column will only be calculated when you have entered discrete data in these top three rows of boxes for products A, B, and C. If you directly enter a DPMO value instead, let's say you entered 10,000 for product A, because we no longer know the number of units that the DPMO was based on, we cannot calculate the total across all the products. So when you hand enter the DPMO directly, you will still get your sigma levels calculated for the individual products, but you will not get the total column. So that's the sigma level calculator for discrete data. Now let's move on to the continuous data calculator. The continuous data calculations are just below on the same tool. And for continuous data, we need only enter the average or mean the standard deviation of the process, and then either an upper or a lower specification limit or both. You must have at least one of them. Let's enter an upper specification limit. You can see that at this point, the calculator has gone ahead and calculated the z-score for the upper spec and the sigma level based on a single-sided spec on the upper side. Then if we add a lower specification limit, it will recalculate the z-score and sigma level based on the specification range. We can also delete the upper spec to have just a lower specification limit, and the calculator will recalculate based just on the lower spec. So the continuous data sigma level calculator is a little bit easier to use than the discrete data calculator. This covers the sigma level calculator, and as with all studies in Engine Room, Everything is saved automatically so that as soon as you close the study, you will now see the sigma level calculator study on the right side in the studies panel. And if you were to open the study, you will see that all of your data is still there.